I wonder what your opinion is of uh, the uh, the uh, the concept of enlightenment that Zen Buddhists um, try to pursue. I mean, do you think it's ridiculous or a waste of time or? Well, I, I would like to give something that's completely unrelated to your question. I apologize <laughs> real quick, I but I want to tie it back into Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> and religions not liking oh. Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm going to tell you this story. I don't know if he was listening at the beginning of the show, but... Okay, yeah. well, yeah. it'll make sense okay. to the viewers. <laughs> I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, and I don't even like it. So, but but oh well. <laughs> How well, do you know a, if you okay. haven't played it? Yeah, no, it's. Well, that's true. That's true. I just thought it just seems like I wouldn't like, but I, <laughs> that's, you know, I should try it. You know, to each to each their own. That's fine. But I'm going to tell a quick story. Uh, we had a okay. monk in our Dungeons and Dragons campaign, and we reached an opportunity where we all got to ask for a wish for something that our character really wanted, and uh, the monk asked for true enlightenment. And oh. the monk okay. realized that he was just a Dungeons and Dragons character. <laughs> 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 right. Because that was true enlightenment for that monk. Um, so, enlightenment... Not very satisfying to the player, I bet. <laughs> no. Uh, well, that was, pretty that was pretty good for the player, because then... Uh, from then on, they were just like, we're just numbers. <laughs> we, are, we are just numbers on a page. Uh, so he was, he was very depressed. He was very weird, you know, weird <laughs> meta-funk afterwards. Um, but uh, to tie it back in, which is that, you know, um, in, in Dungeons & Dragons, Christianity has a counterpoint. Uh, which shows the weaknesses of Christianity, because Christianity can't live up to that counterpoint. And I would say, <laughs> similarly, maybe, uh, Buddhism also can't live up to the Dungeons & Dragons counterpoint, where you could wish for true enlightenment and achieve it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think a Zen Buddhist would, would say, no, that's ridiculous. You can't wish for enlightenment. You have to not wish for it, and then you'll get it. Oh, okay. that, that's what Buddhists talk like. But, um, so, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, it, I think part of it is that neither <laughs> Russell nor I are qualified to... We're not to, versed in the topic. To, ...to speak to Zen Buddhism. So while we may disagree with the idea of enlightenment, I don't know that we would necessarily oh. go so far as... Well, yeah, but I mean, I just thought uh, it occurred to me that maybe we should have started out on a different footing instead of, uh, instead of guessing whether uh, enlightenment is or isn't a concept that, made, that makes sense. We should have just started by asking, what is Zen enlightenment? And, and if you tell us that, then we'll tell you if it makes any sense. Mm. To us. I, I, I mean, have, you know, no you name-checked a couple of people who aren't us and said they don't agree with it, but that doesn't mm. help because we're all our own people. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I kind of, I, getting back again to what I thought uh, Hammond Mehta said, that, I mean, it, it's, if what he was like, saying is I, true... I mean, I'm just going to tell you here, nothing particularly against Hemant Mehta, but I don't even know okay. him all that well. So, like, you telling okay. him... Like, like, you telling me what he thinks is is interesting. It might right. be a good conversation starter the next time I see him. But, uh, oh. I mean, like, we don't all have the same opinions about things. Yeah, and he, I was just going to say... And has got some wonky them. ones, for sure. <laughs> I was just going to say that I guess I'm making the mistake of just assuming that he's representative of all atheists. I know yeah, no, heard, don't, don't make the mistake of thinking any yeah, atheist is representative. I, no, I'm going to let you in on an atheist secret. <laughs> we, oh, no, don't tell them our secrets. <laughs> I'm going to let you in on uh, an please, atheist please, secret. Uh, atheists have sex. We have S-E-C-T-S. Oh. Uh, we have... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the other one too. We we have uh, we have different denominations. I'll use that word, um, <laughs> but we uh, we don't have names for any of them, and they're all kind of loosey goosey. So they're they're informal. Informal loosey goosey. We don't even have really names for him. So, you know, he doesn't necessarily belong in our dom denomination. 
So I, I guess uh, I guess you, to, to to sort of wrap it up, you're saying you really have no opinion one way or the other as to whether um, it's possible for someone to attain enlightenment, well, whether it's a ridiculous pursuit or no. We did. I mean, we, you didn't answer my question. What is it? Yeah. What is this oh, thing that what? you're trying to get me to render an opinion on? I I, I really I don't. I mean, I've been doing it since roughly the early 80s, and wow. I really don't understand it yet myself. Oh, okay. So it doesn't even make sense to you. <laughs> well, it's not that it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make as much sense as I would like it to make sense. Okay. It, uh, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, it's it's something that you can't really grasp, I guess, with your mind. It's um, I guess it has to do with with. Um, that sounds like a fancy way freedom. of saying it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh. Well. Sorry. I mean, I, I I seem to be going through some sort of a spiritual crisis, uh, partly yeah. because I'm just wondering if it's really worth it. Um, oh. All this practice I've been doing, am I really? Uh, Getting anywhere? Should I just give it up? And um, um. so I, I mean, wow. Okay. That's I mean, you know, I don't want responsibility for uh, for deciding whether you have a crisis or not. But I will tell you that there are a lot of different groups that will make a lot of different claims about how your your life or your fulfillment in life, your basic ability to be happy and enjoy things is all dependent on you accepting some truth that they'll tell you without evidence. I mean, the Christians will tell you that right. without any particular reason behind it, that you are oh, risking yeah, right. the loss of eternal happiness if you don't accept this Jesus character. But they can't give you convincing reasons for it. And I think, I mean, it feels to me like the Enlightenment concept is is a big deal, although maybe the stakes aren't as high as choosing between eternal happiness and eternal torture. But, uh, but I mean, it's still, you still might want to consider that maybe it's just a marketing pitch that you've accepted. Like if you're uh, if you're unhappy oh, that you haven't managed to achieve this thing, but but you still don't quite know what it is, and you're not able to clearly see examples of it, maybe it's them and it's not you. Well, it's something that said that it's not e very easy to accomplish in one lifetime. Of course, that mm. gets into the idea. Yeah, but I don't but have any mean, evidence that there's more than one, so uh, that's yeah, no I help. I, well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that part of. It's either, but mm, I, sure. I, I guess it's possible to achieve in one lifetime if you really uh, work hard at it. Well, I, so uh, I, my, my thought on that is that, you, you know, you've worked on this really hard. Um, yeah. And that's that's not for nothing. I mean, well, not that that's not nothing. I mean, that was still an important part of your life. I would say, you know, that maybe that meditation or that you know internal looking into yourself, uh, self introspection. Right. Those right, right. those are important things, and maybe that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a larger goal uh, of you know a vague enlightenment for you to achieve some sort of perfection. Uh, but maybe those those exercises are still helpful or enjoyable or uh, whatever for you, and that's that's kind of. You know, without anything necessarily magical or spiritual, that can still be a valuable and uh, you know a, a, a valuable way for you to kind of you know manage your life and manage your thoughts and you know s help center yourself in whatever way that means. Um, if you end up, if you will permit me one joke, if you if okay. you do find yourself denied. <laughs> oh no. Uh, if you, if you do find yourself, you know, kind of giving up on all of it, uh, and you need a new hobby, why not Dungeons and no. Dragons? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no I, I I don't I don't, don't even, I wouldn't wouldn't even know how to get started in Dungeons. And Dragons. Oh no! This is going to turn my, into uh, uh, like a, a, a an evangelical evangelical Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and be like, have you heard the good news about yeah. uh, Nizoth? <laughs> Sorry, wrong that's, mythos, that's but that's the only god that, that came to mind. It's fine. 
No, I mean, how do you even get involved in the game? Do you just go online and sign in or something, or do you need to buy something, or what? You you look in ads for local groups that are doing public events at, at I mean, I don't oh. know. That's probably yeah. What I would, would, I would say do. you know look for a local group that's uh, <laughs> that's doing walk-ins, welcome, uh, that sort of thing, and m say that you're new to the game and. Uh, you, you know, you you could you could roll the dice and, and get a bad group that are too focused <laughs> on the rules, uh, or you dice, could you could look out and get a group that's uh, really happy and, and patient to explain to you the rules, and you could look for something that's a little less intense than Dungeons Dragons, <laughs> like you know so, some other tabletop or board games or whatever. Or video games, I like video, video games. games. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the experience, I, uh, I guess, is similar to what the what's uh, portrayed on um, on um, the Big Bang Theory show. Oh, neither Russell <laughs> and I really watch so it. I'll tell you another se oh. secret: uh, oh. nerds hate the Big Bang Theory show. Well, <laughs> really, I I don't want to speak for all nerds. Uh, like some nerds really like it, but, but oh, uh, well, I, I don't like we, the laugh track. That's really annoying. But other than that, I like I really like the show. Yeah, but I feel like we are in danger of losing the part of the audience that does want to hear about atheism mainly. So, uh yeah, I don't think it's bad. It just it just feel everything feels a little like off about about that oh. that show. I'm just like, oh, that's not how that would go. Ah. That's, well, that's a, well, it's just up to that's a personal preference thing. Doesn't even. Yeah. We're going to get a lot no, of email I, now who, yeah. from people who are like, oh, I can't believe you said you don't like the Big Bang Theory because that's the <laughs> best show ever. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't watch it, actually, so I don't really feel strong opinions about it. Yeah. <laughs> but I've heard. Anyway, uh, thanks for calling. It's very popular. Uh, okay. It is right, very popular. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. thank you. I hope, I hope okay. that this helps you. And if it doesn't, feel free to call again. Good luck finding enlightenment or giving up on finding enlightenment, because yeah. that would be a very zen thing to do, too, I think. Ooh. Bye. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.